A threat and a major revenue source, crocodiles were big business for much of the 20th century. This crocodile is big enough to kill a horse or a buffalo. Maury must be careful to keep out of range of its powerful tail and jaws. The exotic and dangerous industry boomed in the Territory after World War II, with crocs killed indiscriminately to supply growing global demand. The belly portion of the crocodile is the most valuable part of the skin. This delicately patterned leather is used for the finest quality handbags, belts and shoes. But with populations hunted to near extinction, a ban on the practice was introduced in 1971 and slowly crocodiles became a protected species. Mainly because the hunters that were left were sort of saying, we've got a problem, our resource is going to be gone completely unless, unless some controls are brought in. These days, with a management plan focused on conservation, controlled egg collection and the removal of select crocodiles, the Territory's salty population sits at more than 100,000. But after a non-fatal attack at the popular Wongai Falls this week, the prospect of a cull has again been raised. But experts say a cull won't solve the problem. If you cull half the crocodiles in the Northern Territory, you took out 50,000 crocs. Which politician is going to say, well, OK, it's safe to go back into the water? Territory businesses still heavily rely on the reptile with a booming crocodile tourism industry. The federal government has now weighed in on the debate and says crocodile culling is ultimately up to the states and territories, so long as it doesn't impact on conservation. Natasha McFarlane, ABC News.